I have an earth shattering best practice. I think we're going to have to focus on data quality. I think we've been talking about this probably uh, for our entire careers, all of us here, but uh, organizations, they, they're they still struggling with it. And if they can't get that right, your, your, your house of cards uh, falls over. Yeah, it's always data. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually, you know, right here in Gartner, in Orlando, Gartner's uh, Data Analytics Summit. Um, and uh, I actually, coincidentally, I actually gave a talk yesterday on like the uh, how to avoid chaos and the pitfalls to avoid, right, and having successful uh, AI deployment. But Gartner actually did a study that said, uh, they surveyed a bunch of CIOs and CDOs and said, why haven't you guys rolled out? AI projects? Why haven't you rolled out just AI project? Everyone knows they want it in data and analytics, but very few actually have it in production. And the number one reason, I think 49% uh, of all respondents and the reason why they won't do it um, is trust, reliability, right? Um, verifiability, right? So it, it goes beyond quality of the data, right? It goes beyond that, it goes into, well, how do I know you put it together right? How do I know it came from the right source, right? How do I know I can trust like how it was assembled? So I think quality has become, before we used to think of data quality, it's really kind of like we're limiting to like the, the sure. column, right? The specific fields, et cetera. This is now much bigger than that because if you're now trusting uh, the agents to do all the work in terms of the discovery, the transformation, the prep and the assembly, there's now a lot more tasks that you need to do to introspect and verify. And so this gets into a lot of explainability, right? AI explainability. It's like, great, you've automated, but now you need to explain it. Show me why I believe what you actually did uh, is good, right? So all the things that we've been talking about, like lineage, data quality, it comes into focus. Uh, the hard part is how do you do that very just as quickly? So just as quickly as you give the answer, you have to just as quickly give the explanation uh, as part of the output so that people can trust it. And I think... That's what's holding people back, right? If you, like, I've walked around the solution floor, every vendor has some sort of Gen.A. offering to do text to SQL. But if you just ask the person to do a demo, how do I know that's right? Uh, they all kind of give you kind of a surprise and kind of uncomfortable look. But that's really kind of, I think, the, the main focus in 2025 we really need to focus on is people need to be able to say, when you do it quickly, I trust you. I can verify that is going to be the right answer. Yeah, yeah. And, and... I, I also think, Casey, uh, to that point, there is also a need for a mindset shift <laughs> uh, because we are moving from a deterministic world or, you know, deterministic plus a non-deterministic world. So there is, again, I, I, I would welcome everyone's views on this, but there is to some extent, uh, there needs to be a trust with the AI and work from the other side in the sense that instead of, you know, knowing what it is doing, looking at what it is providing and doing evals or evaluation and, and you know, see how to make it work. We, we, we were always in a deterministic world. So I, I could code something and I could say that, okay, yeah, you know, I, this did not give the output that I wanted, but, you know, <laughs> uh, but it gave something. So let me go debug it and find out. But here there is no debug. <laughs> that it's more of an evaluation and trying to work with the AI agent. So I, because I've been working on it, that's why uh, yeah. I can see that we have to be, have a mindset shift in terms of some trusting uh, and, and some logging and, and things uh, so that we, we, we are able to embrace that cognitive aspect of this powerful aspect as well. You know, it's almost like, you know, trust but verify, right? You <laughs> want to be... <laughs> Yeah, in machine. You, you have to have the trust, but it is very interesting because yeah. the content that is generated hmm. is not objectively easy to evaluate, right? So we did a, a prospecting automation, right? I, yeah. Someone mentioned earlier, sales automation, prospecting automation. So you're creating this very personalized content for prospecting or upsell campaigns or whatever. How do you actually say this is 9 out of 10 or 2 out of 10, right? It, it was earlier very easy because you had a deterministic output with which to compare. And that is not very true with unstructured language outputs, pictures and images. We are creating this campaign tools for a large candy company in the US, right? Where instead of taking two months, the agents are helping you run a campaign in two weeks. But once you have this case where you are actually generating text and images and potentially videos sometime soon with agentic AI, how do you evaluate if 
all of the right brand guidelines are followed the company's policies are followed you're not mentioning a lot of your competitors right in your own campaigns how do you actually evaluate that it's not an easy problem to solve but we are actually seeing a lot of companies especially the cloud providers and companies like databricks and snowflake actually coming forward with very very interesting solutions there are also startups in the silicon valley and elsewhere who are attacking pieces of that problem right uh, quality assurance is a big problem and putting it all together is something that cios ctos should start thinking up front rather than as a bolt on add on at the end of the project that's something one of the things i would say Uh, to be something very very careful of upfront uh, during the planning phases. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, Paige. Uh, it's just that thinking testing. I mean, exactly what you just said. Testing needs to almost be a first. It needs to be the beginning. It, it, you need to start with how do I test whether or not this is accurate? How do I know if it did what I want it to do? Yes. Um. I I have to test the edge cases. I have to make sure that it's it's not doing what I didn't intend it to do. Yes. Um and and to do that you have to just test the crap out of it. You have to have some some QA that's next level. And that's um that's definitely not something I think a lot of people are thinking about right now. That 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 level of I I've got to have guardrails so it can't go beyond here. I've got to have, I've got to check to see if it's doing this or doing this, which we don't want it to do. Um, I've got to check the do that it, that it is doing this really well that we do want it to do. And those are all, I mean, in the past we've had trouble with like natural language processing and deep learning capabilities that could dive in and give you a more accurate answer, except that no one trusted it because they had no idea what it was doing under the covers. Whereas if you did like a decision tree which you could very easily see what the reasoning was um then you trusted the answers yeah. i worked at a previous company where um they put out an ai um um application that helped with uh pricing cars at at auctions and the person who priced the cars because they were experienced was relatively good the person who was inexperienced was terrible the ai by itself was only slightly better than the inexperienced person the best at it was the person and the ai but they couldn't get it accepted no one would use it especially not the experienced people until they put the explanation in there until they explained how it came to that conclusion and i think that Casey mentioned that as well. It's like being able to explain why you say that is sometimes as important as as giving us a final decision. I think also that you know there is a range of technologies that we need to think of <laughs> because, like you mentioned, decision tree. So if you want explainability and you know uh, solid explainability, yeah, go for a decision tree like representation. Because and and remember that we still have the deterministic uh, apps. We still have machine learning. <laughs> we have many of these different representations, and we st- we also have this new thing like Unmesh was talking about. Uh, so you need to choose what is right for your use case you know so for some of these use cases this uh, new ai may not be the right fit and that's something i really uh, caution people because everyone wants to be in terms of yeah let's build an ai agent for that but you know is ai agent the right thing for that so that's something to think about all right so um, any other thoughts uh, on on any best practices i, I think some of best practices is probably to think of uh, is the ensuring the human oversight i think that to some extent uh, covers for this uh, unpredictability which is there and actually one more point is that this needs to be a continuous process at this point of time because what we are calling as testing now is calling as evaluation because it's done at the beginning along with the development and then it has to be continuous because the models keep changing and the output could keep changing so yeah so i think human ends oversight and one more thing i think is the change management uh, fostering a culture of innovation ensuring that people are all on board and innovating with ai and you know we all working together i think i think that those are some good best practices yeah well, i think there i think there needs to be a shift in thinking about innovation too because most of what i'm seeing is from 1.2 to 1.3 or from it's doing something better right and we're sitting on the precipice of opportunity for zero to one kinds of innovations. And yeah. the companies are thinking about that kind of innovation 
are going to be the winners because there are new products to be developed. There are new services to be developed. Yep. There are new business models to be explored. And those are those are potentially zero to one. And if all we're looking at is how do I improve productivity, which by the way, we should be looking at it. But if that's all we're looking at, um, we're going to miss the opportunities that are the zero to one innovations. And, and, and uh, that that's where the that's where the real money is. Yeah, good point, John. Yeah. And and I think, again, I think I go back to my mindset shift, right? <laughs> Who can make the biggest mindset shift can go from that zero to one to new opportunities. Awesome. Yeah, I agree. It's kind, of, it, it's kind of like when, you know, when we when the when film first happened, right? Mm. All people knew were musicals. And so all they did was put musicals on film and they had no idea that they could do something else when we went from radio to TV, people did radio programs on television. And now you look at where we're at with filmmaking. Well, this is that kind of a shift. Right. So the, the, I, I think we're, I think we're so early. We, we don't even, we have no clue what those, those real shifts are going to be, but they're coming. They're coming now. Yeah. That's like the internet. That's like no one, no one could have possibly imagined uh, Salesforce. <laughs> you know yeah. or or uber for that matter it's like there's there's so many things that that you know back in the 90s when the internet was young even google was crazy yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. there's there's just there are things that we have not even thought of yet that are going to that are going to come soon yeah i agree we don't know what what we don't know but we do know that one thing is really really critical and that's people right whether it is how do we actually enroll people in this change, right? The fact that we have to do the ethos, pathos, and logos, right? A lot of us technologies particularly start with the logic part of it, and that doesn't work. And to explain to people that this AI, whether it's agentic AI or any other form of AI in future, is actually there to help you, right? Yeah. Not place you, not better than you necessarily. It's actually something that helps me do what I want to do in a more creative way, faster and better, right? I think that will really, really kind of take away a lot of objections that will help people, uh, enroll people's minds into making this happen. And then keeping the people involved throughout the process, getting them upfront understanding, like, yeah, I should ask clarifying questions. So it's actually doing the right thing, right? It's actually humans need to review the process and make sure that it stays on, 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 on its path. And then the end outcome of the AI agentic systems should also be reviewed by humans. So human experts still have a very, very critical role, right? We went from riding horses to cars, but still the car doesn't tell you where to go. It's us. And we have to really understand and remember that, that we humans are the key decision makers and expertise is still very, very valuable. Yeah, and, and I think, I think a, lot of, a lot of times people kind of, I think we, we get too caught up on the end result. Right. We get, oh my God, this can automate this. Um, and I think sometimes you need to take a step back and say, even if the end result was not 100%, the fact that it was 90, 80, but it was done in five seconds, guys, that's still a huge win, right? Yes, right. To Amish's point, the human needs to get involved. But think about that. The human waited five seconds to get involved as opposed to what before the human waited three months. So sometimes when I hear like, oh, I can't trust it, it's not accurate, it's like, well, slow down, right? Like th this is not going to happen overnight. But the fact that you took a task for three months to five seconds for the human to get like, come on, let's celebrate that. That is a huge, huge step in the right direction. So I think back to, you know, kind of what Nando was saying is the mindset shift, right? It's it's not only just willingness to adopt, it's also uh, willingness to kind of look at, you know, the improvement, right, that we have, and it's it's staggering, right? Like John said, like you need to recognize that if you're going to do the next zero to one, because if you're so close-minded that unless it's a hundred percent accurate, I'm not going to use it. You're kind of missing the point here, right? It's that iteration is going to rapidly get us to the next big thing, but you need to be willing to adopt that and be willing to say, look, the fact that I fixed thirty problems today as opposed to you know one every three months. That's a big, good thing. That's definitely a huge step in the right direction. Yeah, I think one really good example of that. Um, David mentioned healthcare. Um, there was so if you were trying to map the the shapes of proteins, 
like 120,000 of them were mapped over the last 50 years or whatever, a long time. And it took a, a year for a human to try and get that done. And then they finally found an AI that was 90% accurate doing that. And they were able to map 200 million of them. Yeah. All the rest of the proteins in the world yeah. in a year. Alpha, alpha fold, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, I mean, just the, the, the exponentially, I mean, beyond exponentially um, uh, improvement. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has it, to be exactly. way better than us. Yeah, and uh, that reminds me of the RPA days, you know, when we started o o OCR, which is re reading text from documents, yeah. you know, it would be at like 50, 60%, and then people would say, yeah, this is, doesn't work. It even reached 80, 90%, but people would not use it because it's not fully automated. But yeah. really, we really want it to be fully automated. Uh, and, 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 so, and then, you know, like autonomous cars, you know, now, uh, so people were like, yeah, the autonomous cars doesn't work. But then now Waymo is an autonomous car. But then people are like, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I think we need to use what 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 is useful right now. And, and yeah, that, that's an awesome point. Well, so we may not have autonomous cars, but I mean, I went to back up and, and, you know, my husband almost backed into a pole and the car beep, 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 hits the brakes. Yeah. I've had the car less than a week, and it's just so, it saved me from having an accident. Yeah, and that is straight from the um, AI of trying to to create an autonomous car. Let's use the piece of it that we can use. That's useful. Yeah, exactly. By the way, we call them autonomous cars, self-driving cars. It's actually what has been created is an AI agent that mimics the role of a driver. It is an yeah, that is agent. Yeah. That is agentic AI. Yeah. 